All right, welcome to One on One. I'm Joe Krakowski. My guest today is Tyler Resch. And if you haven't heard that name, you maybe have heard his voice, his singing. Uh, we first of all welcome you, Tyler, to the studio. Yeah, thanks for having me. You may not have heard him talking, but you've heard him singing definitely. And Tyler, uh, you're a graduate here from, from Alexandria in 2009. And it's been a journey, hasn't it, since then? It has. Yeah, a lot of ups and downs, and but I think we're on an up right now. Yeah, let's talk about the up, because now you're, you, you are working on your own album right now in Nashville. Yep. And let's talk about the process of getting to Nashville, because it doesn't start there. It starts as a 15-year-old kid here in Alexandria writing some crazy songs. Talk about that experience. Yeah. Just being a little punk, I had some good buddies that we kind of had a garage band right away, and it kind of turned into uh, something that we would go out and play a little bit. But um, we were writing our own songs, and uh, we were having a lot of fun. That's the crazy thing. So you're 15, and you're doing you're not doing a lot of covers. You're doing your own music. That's always been the um, yeah. I've, I've done the bar band thing, and I've done the covers, and it's it's all fun. But I think the the part that I really really get a kick out of is the creation part. Okay, now you, you've listened to all kinds of music, but you're kind of you're kind of gravitating towards country and a little bit of rock with that, and just having fun and kind of explain that maybe that process of finding that that's where you are, that's your genre, that's that's your kind of area. Yeah, I, I grew up with uh, George Strait and Dwight Yoakam and Alan Jackson, and those guys were were just like the kings of the radio when I was growing up, and that's what my dad listened to and. Um, so I was, I was exposed to all of that, you know, kind of hardcore country. That was the, the neo-traditionalists that were, you know, came up in the late eighties and early nineties. But, you know, as a, as a teenager, I was, um, you know, into, I got into punk rock for a while and I was, you know, I wanted to hear that heavy rock and roll guitar on, you know, a lot of the records that, you know, those pop punk records that were coming out when, you know, been like the early two thousands and. But somewhere along the lines, I just kind of, you know, drifted back towards country. But I, I think that there's still a, there's still that little punk rock kid in, inside me that, you know, kind of wants wants to get rowdy and and bring some rock and roll to to country. So. So you're playing a lot of weekends and those kind of gigs, and so so talk about how that helped you become a better musician, better singer. It did because it, um, you know, you're. You're playing for people that that don't know who you are, so you got to re- you got to be really good about, um, you know, entertaining people that um, they sometimes can be can be tough to, you know, they can be tough crowds. So it it really does teach you how to how to earn a crowd and and keep people interested, and um, it it also you know taught me that you know slow country ballads don't don't go over very well at, <laughs> at a lot of those bars. A so. Street dance or something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to do it. Yeah. Talk to me about Nashville. So you meet up with uh, Byron Hill, and that just kind of changed things for you dramatically. Yeah, it? yeah. It was. It's kind of a crazy story. He was. He was like one of the only guys that that I had kind of researched, and you know, I was like, I, I liked Gary Allen at the time, so I looked up. You know, how, how did he get his start? And it was, it was, it was this guy named Byron Hill who had who had found him in in California. He was doing you know cover band gigs out in in California, kind of like I was up here. And he, he brought Gary out to Nashville. They did a, they did a a demo and they shopped it around to some record labels and he, he got Gary his record deal. And so that's, that's not really how it works anymore. You know, it it was, uh, that was a different time in music, but it's, uh, it was three days after we, um, had moved to Nashville and ran into a guy at a, at a, at a club and, and we were in the parking lot and, Ended up talking to him, and and uh, somewhere along the lines, he goes, "Well, uh, I, I know I know Byron Hill, and I, I just had lunch with with Byron, you know, today." And it was like, you know, you got to be kidding me. That's the, the only guy that you know, I I really know that could be a you know mentor and somebody that's been in the business. And he said, "Yeah, I'll I'll send him some of your songs, and you know, send me some of your stuff." And and so he sent it over to Byron, and I think a few days later, he said, "Oh man, he 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 loved your stuff, man. He he wants to meet you. He wants to." sit down and, and, and write with you. So that's kind of how it all got started. And, you know, I was, I was very fortunate to, to run into uh, that guy at that club. Talk about this assembly of musicians that you have into this new work that you have. 
Yeah, um, was very very fortunate with the guys that that um, played on the album. Um, one guy's named Saul, um, Saul Philcox Littlefield. He's from England actually, and he's just a monster guitar player. He actually played on um, Luke Combs's last record. So um, I was I had had a really killer band that um, in the studio. I was really proud of them with how the songs turned out on the album. How many songs are on this EP? There's there's eight on it. Okay, so of those eight, there's a, is there a mix of fast or slow, or what do we have here? Yeah, it's all over the board. I'd say there's probably three or four that I, I would call up-tempo. There's, there's um, probably three more are kind of a mid-tempo, and then there, I got a, a, a kind of a power ballad in there. Yeah. Yeah. So when can people hear these? When will they be released? Um, it's, it's Roughly. Shortly. Uh, I would say that either I'm gonna, I want to say – Late summer. That's that's what I'm shooting for. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna release a free single at some point too. So, um, if if people want to go to the website, it's just tyleresh.com, um, and sign up for the email list. We're gonna we're gonna shoot out a free single to the people that are signed up for that list, and so they'll be the first to hear something off of the new album. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. <laughs> but I, I appreciate you stopping into our studio, and we look forward to hearing more from you. And who knows uh, where the next Tyler Resch appearance will be. We're going to get on the road, uh, and that's that's kind of the next thing that we're going to really be hammering out. So we'll be wanting to play as many dates as we can possibly get at this point. So but sure appreciate you having me on your show. All right. And that is Tyler Resch, and this has been One on One. I'm Joe Krakowski. Yeah.